Hey everybody, welcome back to the Garage and I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, watch the previous torque management introduction video. There was a lot of great suggestions out there and because of that we are looking uh, at a, let's see here, what do we got, what do we got? Let me find something good here. How about a 2008 stock Corvette? That's going to be our first in-depth guide to torque management. So let me get the screen recording here, uh, and while I do that, watch the intro, watch the disclaimer, because there's always going to be a disclaimer on torque management, and whenever you get back, we'll have this set up. That way you can see what I'm looking at. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, we got the window opened up here. Uh, we're looking at a 2008 stock Corvette. This is, let's check out the calibration details. So this is an E38 with the uh, T43 A6 transmission will be a 6L80. This is my tuning partner, Seven. Seven, look, can you look up the camera? Oh, thank you for the kisses. Yes, thank you. Yes, she knows all about the uh, 6L80s. So let's dive into this. We're gonna start on the engine torque management side of things. And to do so, we've gotta look at the torque model first. So let's check out what's going on with the torque model with the, uh, the 2008 here. And this is using the virtual torque setup that we've touched on, the Gen 5s. This was kind of the start of the Gen 4 torque stuff. And so back in the day, we didn't have access to this in 2008. So we had to do some funky crap to make this all happen. But if we go in and look at it now, let's go down to the higher spark range. Uh, my laptop's not really tall enough to look at it. But as you can see, even at spark 30, we're getting up to the uh, 450 foot-pounds of torque. That's stock, that's pretty generous for a uh, LS3, but you have to remember that this is crank torque. But that's something to keep in mind that on a stock vehicle, we are looking at this torque as our base torque that we're functioning all of the rest of the torque management off of. So if we're making adjustments to torque, we're making it off of the assumption that we might be making in the 450 foot-pound range on this particular platform. Now, if you were to go in and add a supercharger or something on this, say we were to go in and run this at 8 PSI, the next thing you know, we're making 650 foot-pounds of torque, that range on there, that is something that we need to take into consideration. So always check out your torque tables, if it's virtual torque, if you have them available. The stuff before this generation, probably is not going to really have torque table. It might have some torque modeling that we still need to take into consideration, but the torque management's going to be a little bit different than this. Honestly, the torque management on this setup is going to kind of be what we see after this setup. This, this was a, there was another evolution of this as we got into the Gen 5s, but this is the basis of it. So, that being said, let's jump over to torque management. On the engine side, there's not a lot of stuff that we are concerned about as far as torque management goes because we are basically trying to make as much torque as humanly possible from the engine's perspective. It's whenever we get into other systems that uh, affect torque that we have to worry about. And that's why you may see things like, well, for one, front axle max, this is maxed out because there's not a front axle on this. This is going to be on something that's got four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. But on the rear axle max here, as you can see, it is already maxed out. Something else you can also do is come in here on the trans input and output. You can go ahead and max those values out. Uh, as you can see, these max out at 97,000 foot-pounds. The trans input does not. This is because the transmission technically is a torque multiplier on an automatic transmission. That's why we can only max this one out at 6042 and kind of the same ordeal on the trans output 6042. That's not necessarily an accurate representation of what is the output on the transmission. If you look at the rear axle max, that is more of an accurate representation, though it's not accurate in the fact that it thinks that we are trying to generate a hundred thousand foot pounds of torque. But maxing these out, and on later models, they will max out at 97,000. It doesn't matter. Maxing these out just goes ahead and does away with one uh, control mode that we have to deal with. The other ones that we're looking at really on 
the engine side of this is the RPM versus gear. But once again, you can see this has already been maxed out. We're not really concerned. If your tables aren't maxed out on the engine already, you can probably go ahead and max those out because we want the engine to make full power. If you were to come in here and dial this back and put 350 across the board on this, uh, what you're going to end up doing is it will start pulling timing once it predicts that you are at 350 foot-pounds of torque. So that's one thing to look out for. And then there's going to be some adjustments on the individual gears. But to be honest, uh, if you see, this is a Corvette and it stops at 3,000 RPMs at 280 foot-pounds of torque. So kind of like the virtual torque table, if you need to come in here and bump this stuff up, necessarily only maybe in the 900 to 3000 range you don't really need to worry about 800 and less because you're not going to be below 800 rpms usually you know your car if it is modified is probably running around 700 rpm idle 600 rpm idle and we're not concerned about a lot of torque off of idle as soon as we step out of idle maybe but same ordeal fourth gear you know, 800 RPMs, I don't know that you can really bog this thing down unless you've got the transmission in manual mode to hit 800 RPMs. So these tables aren't that important. So there's some other stuff in here, tip in limiting. We're not worried about that because it's already disabled. The thing that we do want to look at is the traction control system. This, mainly this max torque value right here will pull timing whenever traction control is enabled. Don't max this out, but let's make it realistic. Say that you're having, you know, this is a good value that you can use to help grab traction if you're blowing the tires off. I would say start this out with your predicted torque value. And so if you've got a blower, turbocharger, something on there, and you think you're making 650 foot-pounds of torque, start it at 650 foot-pounds of torque, see how things react but then dial it back a little bit. You will know when you are getting into traction control, you will see the light flashing on your dash whenever it is enabled. Uh, if, it, if you have traction control disabled, this will be bypassed. This is not like stability track where it kicks back on at 35 or 40 mile an hour, something like that. And then you also have wheel hop controls. Generally, it's a good idea to keep this stuff enabled unless you are probably to the point where you don't need to be tuning on this ECU. So, especially on things that are independent rear suspension, this stuff can kind of help with that to keep the tires from getting out of control. So, now let's, uh, you know, this, this is AC torque induction under engine. We don't care about that. That's air conditioning on. If you're racing, your air conditioning should be off. Uh, tech tip, you're racing at the drag strip. Don't run your AC. It does rob you of a lot of power. Starting up under torque management, under the general tab, we're looking at a couple things. Uh, there's a lot of information in here that we don't necessarily care about. Torque reduction can be one of the big ones. Torque reduction is where if we are shifting up, shift, down, shift, stuff like that, whenever it is enabled, it pulls a lot of timing back. Basically, that's whenever we're seeing the uh, torque request coming from the transmission to the ECU. It says, hey, I'm trying to shift. That gives the engine permission or requests the engine to pull a lot of timing back. So we can come in here and disable some of these. Now, remember, if you are disabling these, you are potentially going to do some damage to your transmission. Anytime that we get into torque management on the transmission and start adjusting some of this, we are running into the possibility of damaging our transmission. And then the other thing that we want to look at is our max shift torque. It's already maxed out on this table. I'm not sure what platforms it's not maxed out, but if it isn't, that's one that you can max out. But the big ones being these torque reductions. Whenever I was running uh, my 2008 Corvette, brand new off the showroom floor, uh, and it's the one that I shaved, I don't know, half a second off in the quarter mile just by doing away with torque reduction. Next, we get into the adder multipliers. Instead of changing the torque factor multiplier, if you want to make some adjustments on the one, two, and the two, three adder multipliers, this is probably the place to do it. But as you can see, three, four, four, five, and five, six is already the one. Uh, I would not necessarily run the one, two, or the two, three up to one right away. Uh, because there's a, the potential that you're going to get some harsh shifts. It's going to be hard on the transmission. So 
you know, maybe try dialing those up to a 0.5, see how everything reacts. It's gonna make some stuff do some, some harder shifting on that. So, I mean, looking back at the general tab, a lot of this stuff's already basically disabled on the Corvettes. I don't know about other E38 platforms or 6L80s on the trucks. There might be some of this stuff that's already enabled. The good idea is if you wanna make it shift like a Corvette and you know that the Corvette that you wanna make it shift like has the same transmission, Take a care, take a look and look at the 6L80 setup on the transmissions as far as the torque management goes. But the big one being the torque reduction, disabling the torque reduction on this stuff, making sure that our max, max shift torque is not already dialed down on somewhere. It's already maxed out on this table. Double check that. That's a good thing. And then, as I said, looking at the torque management general tab to see that we have max torque set up underneath our TCS system and our trans input and out. So as I said, there's gonna be a lot of situations where we are seeing maximum torque in some of these tables where it's not maxed out, where there might actually be values in there. We, you can adjust those values, but the big thing as I went back to and talked about on the Gen 5s is looking at your virtual torque tables. These things are the commanders of everything. All of the torque management in this generation is based off of your virtual torque tables. So if you have not updated these virtual torque tables, you're gonna have issues. The cool thing about it is though, is if your virtual torque tables are set up properly, you technically don't really need to touch anything in torque management. So if you have this thing set up saying that whenever you're at 40 degrees advanced that your peak torque is 650 foot pounds of torque, you can leave things, uh, you'll need to, well that's for traction control as I said, you'll need to bump that one up, but you can leave things like your transmission torque reduction stuff enabled and it's only going to enable or it's only going to reduce your torque versus that 650 as opposed to the 450. So keep that in mind. This is all supplementary on top of the base virtual torque tables. So same ordeal with the torque factor. You know, if you were to come in here and put and you had a 0.5 on this thing as a torque factor, that's basically saying whenever it shifts from one to two, we're going to try and at least limit half of your torque. This thing's not really limiting anything, but back in the day, it was limiting for the mere fact that we did not have access to the torque tables. And since we did not have access to the torque tables, it was literally trying to back us back down to, you know, 450 foot pounds of torque whenever it was shifting whenever we had cars that were making 600. And so it everything ran like a dog. And so we did away with torque management. The new way of doing it is dialing in your virtual torque properly, doing the torque tuning. There is a video, I'll post a link up in the corner specifically talking about doing torque tuning. If you do that on the modern vehicles, the 2008 and afterwards, you don't need to do much from torque management. So that basically wraps up everything in a nutshell. Uh, this is just one of multiple that we're going to do on torque management. Uh, you know, the big thing is if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. I appreciate everybody that's subscribed so far. You guys are the best. Throw a like down below. If you want to see some other platforms, let me know. There's some platforms on the original torque management video, if you haven't watched that one already, where people are suggesting it. We're going to dive into some of these other ones, like six liter uh, trucks with the 6L80. Uh, somebody's requesting looking at torque management on, I think, the 1.8 liter cruise. I'm really excited to look at that. Never even opened up one of those tunes before, so it'll be completely new for me. But we should be able to figure everything out on it. Uh, if you haven't already, check out our Patreon page. For those who are already patrons, thank you. Uh, by signing up for as little as $5 a month, you get access to behind the scenes videos, to extended, uh, you know, you'll get early access to like extended content videos. And then there's some stuff that's only patron exclusive that you can only see by being a patron. So check that link out down below. And as always, check out the full tuning series link if you haven't watched it already. And you know what? Thanks for being the best people out there, the best tuners out there, the people that want to learn this stuff. You guys are the greatest. And stick around. There's more to come. And thanks for stopping by the garage.